Yeah, I'm not showing you the same footage I showed you last time, believe me. It has rained for like two months straight in Georgia. I mean, every single day it rains. So I'm having trouble getting out there and working on everything, but I'm going to do what I can. And it doesn't make a very exciting video, but I just wanted to give you guys an update of the progress. Oh, I can't talk about some of the things that are going into it. I've got this fridge, but this thing takes up a lot of room, and I think I'm going to save this. This is a 12-volt uh, fridge, and it also does 110 uh, fridge freezer. Pretty good size, um, but it takes up a lot of room. So for this camper, I think I'm going to use this other 12-volt fridge. I forgot where I got this one from, but it's got the uh, Dan Foss compressor on it. And it is 110 also, and it does work, at least on 110 it works. I haven't tried uh, the 12 volt, but I'm sure if 110 works, the 12 volt is probably working. <clears throat> it's not a bad size, it'll be good for, uh, good for that little camper, I think. Because this camper that I'm building is just for like uh, overnight, weekends, stuff like that, not like full time. Here is a sink. It's like 18, 17 inches across, and um, I believe this is the sink I'm going to go with. I found this in the scrap yard, and it's in great shape. Well, good shape. And uh, I think I paid 18 bucks for it. Stainless steel. Just got to get a faucet that matches it, and that will be going in the camper. Decided to go with uh, no windows. Got to put some more rivets in here so this thing doesn't rattle. Um, so the windows aren't going in the camper, and I can always put those in later. Uh, so for right now, the most important thing, I'm going to see if I can get get the camper mounted to the uh, utility box. Uh, I got everything lined up. I just need to mount it, put some screws in it, drill a bunch of holes, and try to stay dry at the same time. So, and here is uh, probably the porta potty that we're going with. My wife, uh, she is totally against porta potties, but I, I'm telling her it's not a bucket, and it's electric flush, and you won't even know the difference. You can't even tell the difference between that and a re regular restroom. So <clears throat> we're going to try that out. Oh, I was going to go with some stainless steel, but I don't think that's necessary because this aluminum I've got is really thick, and as you can see, I've already cut out reliefs. I've got to cut one more piece and then I'm going to probably put a bolt here, a bolt there, and then a bunch of screws along here to tie everything together. I do have a leak up here I need to find. I'm going to coat the roof and then, uh, then check for leaks. I do have this sink but it's not quite as large and deep as the other one. This is a, a temporary AC. This is I'll, I'll probably replace this with a newer, more efficient one. But for right now, for the size, um, I am going to be cutting a hole in that. And it's not going to be sticking out the side. What I'm going to have it is so it slides out and pops out a door when necessary. Otherwise, it'll be inside and we'll just, you know, ride about this height. Right here. The entrance is going to stay the same for right now. I thought about making it bigger so you can, like, just roll bikes up in here. You know, like, I could, uh, little bicycles up in here. I don't know. Not all that's worked out, but for right now, I'm going to use the original door and get it all sealed up. The biggest thing right now is to get this entire thing waterproof and sealed up, and then we'll take, think about insulating it. The truck's not running. Still have the cylinder problem. I ordered some shop manuals. And, oh, let me go show you. One thing I had realized, this is a computer for a two-valve and it's a two valve 5.4 engine and as you can see it's got a different format then this is the computer that goes inside that truck with the, this computer is actually the computer that was out of my box van I had a spare and the plugs are the same and this is for a two valve motor just like this one which is the you know, cheaper less expensive engine and seems to last longer you know, fewer complications out of it what I'm hoping, and I don't know until I get the shop manual, that I'm going to check um, all the pins and everything and see if they line up where I can use this two-valve com uh, computer that came out of an E350 van in my F350 truck. That's what I'm hoping for. It's a long shot, 
But if that happens, that is going to be, that's going to make a two valve go in that truck. But we'll see. I think these are seven sixteenths or five sixteenths, I forget. Okay, I have the front and rear supports bolted to the uh, utility box. Got some nice matching angle um, to go that way. Of course, I'm going to cut it so it all fits and uh, make it, you know, semi weather tight anyway. And, uh, what I haven't figured out is whether I'm going to put a bolt completely through the aluminum, the frame right here, and bolt it in that way, or whether I should use multiple fasteners um, and only go in one side. That way I can have a smooth finish on the outside. I'm not I'm not sure about that yet. Um, I want the best support because I mean, the way this thing was originally supported, it was just a piece of wood, and it had a metal plate through the wood with a bolt in it, and that's how it was held on the truck. I might... I'd rather go overkill than <laughs> not have enough here. So I'm going to think about that and uh, I'll figure it out. But that's that's a major hurdle right there is having this thing mounted. And then I can turn this truck around and start working on the engine. So anyway, uh, I told you all last time or I mentioned last time that I want to keep this under $5,000 if possible. Which I don't know if I'm going to make that goal or not. Um, the four-wheel drive setup, I've got about a thousand bucks in the axles frame there, all that mess. Um, the truck itself, $1,700. The camper with the skinned aluminum in it so far, I have about $600 in the camper. Uh, probably end up about $100 worth of uh, skin on it because I got that scrap yard, which is pretty nice for a scrap yard. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. But uh, So that's the total so far. If you don't include that, I got, you know, $1,750 and $600 and, uh, you know, well under budget. Of course, this has got a broken engine in it, which could be repaired. Um, oh, let me show you something else. There's still a possibility that I can repair this engine, and I'm going to uh, gonna try that. If you watch my other videos, you know that I've got a bad number two cylinder. I've taken the plug out of it, and it doesn't show that uh, any damage on the plug. Any, I don't have a scope to look down on the cylinder or anything, but I didn't see any damage on the plug, which... Um, hopefully it means there's not a valve bouncing around in there or something like that. Uh, I'm thinking a blown head gasket. I'm thinking that that's what I've got because I do hear a clicking noise coming around the exhaust down there. That and if you look in here, uh, we're, we've got some, definitely have some water in the oil here. And I don't know what extent that is or whether that is, uh, you know, just condensation, but I would imagine... Once I take this valve cover off there, it's going to tell the whole story. Um, that's one of the reasons I want to get the camper mounted, because I've got it lined up perfect right now. And once I have it secure, I can drive the truck around, turn it around, be on the pad up here, and uh, start working on the engine and see what kind of progress I can make on that. Worst case scenario, I have to put a, uh, a junkyard engine in there with about 100,000 miles on it out of a wrecked, you know, say 2008 through 10 or something like that it's going to cost me around twenty five hundred dollars got to put a clutch in it it's another 300 bucks so not given all the stuff that goes inside to fix the camper and everything i should make a budget of three thousand dollars i mean five thousand dollars i should make a budget of right around five thousand dollars to have a moving vehicle that will have a bed in it and uh, I've already got the fridge and all that kind of stuff in there. I think I showed you that stuff earlier. And I, I've got good prices on that. So if this engine can be repaired and I can throw a head gasket on it and save the head, uh, I'm going to, of course, if I go that far into this engine, I'm going to go ahead and do all the timing and everything. So probably looking at a grand, which, you know what? It's really making sense just to go get a junkyard low mileage engine and stick in here for an extra grand and pop in here 
and but plus they have the updated heads the newer ones from 08 to 010 they have uh, better heads that don't blow the plugs out so I may end up blowing the $5,000 budget we'll see of course if I could put a two valve motor in there I'm gonna get one reasonable price under $1,500 probably I've got one back there it's in that little white truck that one's only $200, and it runs great. Um, that's another option. I might just go with that. And I've got another engine in the basement that I can build. But if I want to get up real quick, get it running, and the two-valve works with the computer, that's probably the, the quickest solution and the least cost the least. All kinds of options here. Sometimes it's not good to have too many options, I guess. But <sighs> got to pick the best solution. I don't want to do this twice. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stick with me. I'm gonna try to stay on this project and uh, try to try to get it done. Right now, it's fighting me like crazy. It's hard to it's hard to push through this. The weather's not co cooperating. Um, just not making any progress. It seems like, but um, every little bit counts. If I can get up every single day and do one tiny little thing towards it, eventually, like the box camper, it will get done. So uh, hang in there. I'll keep you guys up to date. Some of the stuff's going to be boring. Some of it's going to be fun. And um, hopefully it'll all be entertaining. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it. Don't buy it.